Okay, let's move on to Module 12, Tracking Project Progress. So now that we have our schedule built and we've got our resources um, allocated and assigned to the appropriate tasks and we've been working with our calendars, uh, resolving over allocations, etc., etc., it is now time to start tracking the project progress. So in this module, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, tracking actual information and uh, monitoring our progress. So one of the very first things we're going to want to do is to set the project baseline. So what we want to have is a <clears throat> is a historical record of what we think is going to happen by capturing the baseline. And this is going to be an important part of working with the schedule and, and this will also be some of the data that's going to be used when we're generating graphical indicators for example so setting the project baseline and doing that properly is going to be an important part of of working with uh, Microsoft Project and and managing our schedules so we're going to want to first obviously get into our project file in this case we're working with module 12 so let's go ahead and get that file open and make sure we have that saved as a as a new file name Okay, let's take a look at this module 12. This module is covering uh, baselining and working with uh, tracking a project. So the very first thing we want to do is make sure that we are in the module 12. And I'll go ahead and save this as a new file name. And I'll add the my in front of it with the underscore. And so the very first thing that we're going to want to do in this particular file is we're going to want to set the baseline. So setting the baseline is going to be an important part of working with your project schedules because you want to be able to go back into your schedule to understand what you thought was going to happen. Right. So this particular project, right before we start capturing actuals, we're going to want to set the baseline. So I'm going to set the baseline by going up to Tools, and then I'm going to go down to Tracking, and then you'll see Set the Baseline. Okay. You should also understand that you can highlight a range of tasks before you actually set the baseline. So you'll have a choice, and we'll see that here when I click on this, that when you set the baseline, you can choose either entire project or selected tasks. So it's going to be quite often the case that you do not have estimates for some of the tasks down below here in your project schedule, for example, in this design phase. So therefore, you do not want to track the baseline just yet. So in that case, you would highlight 0 through 16 in this particular case, and you would use selected tasks. For our purposes here, just so we can learn about setting the baseline, I'm going to go ahead and do the entire project. So when I do the entire project, I'm going to click OK, and I've captured the baseline. Now I'm going to go up to Project, and Project Information, and then I'm going to click on Statistics, and you'll see that now you have baseline data here in the project statistics. So we've captured the baseline, right? And you can see work and cost and the start and finish dates then get filled in for the baseline values. Okay, so that's how we're going to want to track our baseline and set our baseline so that we can start to um, start capturing actuals. So a couple different ways in which we can capture actuals if you're looking at your manual you want to jump to the updating tasks section and the very first thing that we're going to do is bring out your tracking toolbar and the way I'll do that is I'll right click in my toolbar area up top here and notice that there's a tracking option so I'll go ahead and click on tracking okay and just for the sake of organization I'm going to turn off my resource management and I'm going to turn off my Adobe toolbar so this is the new toolbar that I've just introduced you'll notice that over on the far left hand side is that project statistics button that we were just that dialog box that we were just in if I click on that, notice that it quickly takes me to that statistics area. Okay, The rest of these command buttons, if you roll your pointer over, you'll see that you have the ability to reschedule work, update as scheduled, for example, uh, adding progress lines, 
and then these buttons right here are basically going to be a quick and easy way for you to essentially just mark the percent complete of a particular task this is also going to be a button of interest to you the update tasks button so that you can go into um, the update tasks area and you can enter things like actual start date percent complete uh, remaining duration uh, and other uh, items okay so now that we have our tracking toolbar the other thing that we'll do is we'll go into the tracking Gantt so if you're showing your view bar over here on the left hand side just go to the tracking Gantt you'll notice that it's gonna look a lot like the Gantt chart and it what it might do is what it's similar to mine is it's not showing you the Gantt bar so just simply click on the uh, task number two here and use the scroll to task button to take you to that area and here you're noticing that in the Gantt chart area it looks slightly different right this is showing you the baseline information right that we wouldn't have seen before uh, we actually set that baseline okay so let's go ahead and start to enter in some uh, actual uh, information here some actual duration actual start and finish uh, information into the schedules so the very first thing I'm going to do is click on task number uh, two and if you're in your book we're in the international uh, task finish date uh, area so I'm going to click on task number two and I'm going to go find that update task button click on update tasks it brings me to the update task dialog box okay and in the finish in the actual I'm going to go ahead and just plug in a date here right and I'd have to scroll back in my my dialog box here and go find that particular date and what I'm looking for is essentially the 1-4 date here right of 2010 okay 1-4-2010 so I'm plugging in the I'm plugging in the finish date here the actual finish in the update task I'm simply going to click OK right and you'll notice that it does a couple things uh, the first thing that you'll see is that we get the hundred percent you'll also see that in the summary it's showing us that we're 25 percent done with this particular set of tasks here right underneath the scope phase okay so that's a quick and easy way for you to go in and actually plug in the finish date to update the schedule now let's go to the next task which is conduct needs analysis right task number eight and let's go back to the update task button and from the update task dialog box we're now going to enter an actual duration and so I'm going to go to the actual duration simply type in 3 or 3d okay and I'm going to click OK so I'm putting actual duration at being three days notice it's a little bit longer than what we estimated right and so you'll see how it's pushing the schedule out just slightly because we had originally estimated to be 2.5 days actually took three days if you go back to the update task button here you'll notice that remaining duration is now set to zero right and it fills in both your start and finish dates okay so let's also take a look at entering actual and remaining duration so now let's go to task number nine here okay go back to the update tasks area where we were just in and in the actual duration go ahead and type in two but in this case what you want to do is you're going to put in the remaining duration of two days right so you've determined that you have spent two days on this particular task or that's what's been reported to you by one of the team members and you're going to jump over to remaining duration you're going to fill in the rest of of the time that you need in order to get this done and so we'll see what this does within the schedule right? in this case you can avoid the scheduling conflict right or you can take it and in this case I'm just going to simply hit cancel and notice how it pulls it back okay we just wanted to see an example of how that works now let's use the percent complete in this particular case we'll go to task number three okay and simply use the hundred percent command button here so I'm just going to hit 100% and it just fills it in and what you're doing when you click 100% is you're basically taking right the estimate and you're saying yes that's when it started that's when it finished and that's the time in which it was that I was given that's how long it took okay 
Now let's take a look at entering actual work. So we're going to change the view just slightly here. So let's go to task usage. All right, we'll go to task usage. Notice how in task usage, what it's showing us in this particular case is the task itself and then the resources assigned to those tasks. So as you can see here in scope, we have the individual tasks and then we have the resource that's actually assigned to them. You can see that the project manager and Steve Masters uh, is assigned throughout this first part of it. Okay. So what we want to do is make sure that we are our split bar is far enough that we can actually start to see a little bit more detail about this particular about this particular view. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the actual details here. So we're in the task usage, but we're going to go up to format and down to details and we're going to take a look at actual work. And what actual work is going to do for us is it's going to introduce this additional row here. Okay. So we want to go down to secure core resources. We're looking at the project manager. Okay. And we want to enter in some actual work. So where you want to go is I'm going to grab the split bar and just move it back just slightly just so we can see more of it. And I'm going to scroll across here. And I'm looking for the actual the actual date in which this this activity occurred. Right? So we're seeing that for secure resources, right, for this particular task, we have a particular resource. Now in the book, they want us to go to task number 10. And in, for task number 10, right, we see that Rob Young and Kim Rawls are assigned here. If we were to have used the F5 key and we were to have typed in 10, and clicked OK would have done two things for us. It not only would have brought us down to task number 10, but also in the timeline it would have brought us to this particular area. So you can see that for Rob Young, he's expected to be working eight hours on this particular task on Monday. Right? Right here. And because we introduced the actual work row, we can then type in that information. So I'm just simply going to bring it over here to eight to the actual work and I'm going to type in eight right and hit the enter key and what that's basically doing is it's filling in the actual work for that particular resource okay now for Kim Rawls let's say that she only worked four hours against a particular task so I'm going to type in four here and hit enter and what it's going to do is it's going to then push the four hours to the following day because what it's basically saying is it's saying, well, you've estimated eight hours. She's only worked four. Okay. But we also want to reflect the fact that she's done. So we're going to click on that Tuesday and we're basically going to zero it out. This is equivalent to basically saying that remaining work is now zero. <coughs> and so now we have Kim Rawls basically set at zero. Now we can go back to the tracking Gantt and we can see what we've basically been doing. Right? So you can see that these tasks that we were working in, particularly the one on number 10, has been marked as, as complete. Now if we want to quickly update the remaining schedule, and so I'm in the update the remaining schedule section of, the, of your training manual, is let's go back to task number 1. So again, I'll use the, the shortcut key here for doing that do an F5 and then do a 1, hit enter, take me back to the beginning. And we can update the schedule by going up to Tools and then down the tracking and we're going to go across over into Update Project. And what we're doing is we're basically saying that we want to update as complete through. right? So we're going to do an update as complete through and then we're going to set our date here. And in this particular case I'm just going to type in 122.2010 right and we want to update everything complete up to this particular point and you'll notice the other options that you have reschedule uncompleted work to start after a particular date which is exactly what it'll do it'll just move all of your tasks to that particular date that you're setting there so I'm going to update this to 12210 for the entire project click OK 
If there's any kind of constraints, it will obviously adhere to that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. And you'll notice that what it's done is it's looked at everything up to 122, and you can see it in the timeline, and it's updated everything as complete through that date. I did have a constraint on one of my tasks, so it let me know about that. Right, and I just basically went past that. Okay. Now the last thing that you're going to want to look at, and we're in the splitting tasks section of your of your training manual, is the ability to split tasks. Right. This is a, an instance where you might want to reflect that there's been an interruption in the work. Right, where you may have been working through in a in a three or four day task, but something right in the middle caused you to push it to. Uh, to a later date. So you want to be able to reflect the fact that that quite often there's a there's actually a split task. So what we want to do for task number nine for example is we want to reflect that there has been actually a split. So I'm going to do this in the Gantt chart. I can do it in, in either one but this um, is, a, is a view that you can work in. And so what you're going to want to do is go find the split button which is right here. The split task button. So I'm going to click on the split task button. I'm going to take it over to the the task that I'm interested in. In this case, I'm going to do it to task number nine. And you'll notice that if I rest my pointer, how dates start showing up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till I see 115. When I see 115, I'm then going to click and I'm going to drag it over until I see 118, which is Monday, and rest it there. You might get a message about a, uh, a particular task type like a fixed duration and just go ahead and click past that. But this is how I want this reflected in the schedule because as it turns out that both Kim Rawls and Rob Young there was an interruption here in my schedule and I had to move it over here into Monday. Okay. Now it's probably a good idea that we add a note about what exactly happened. So I'm going to go into that task. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to click in notes and I'm simply going to type in a note here. I'm going to type in we had an internet connectivity issue and this delayed the completion. Right, so at least now you know why there was an interruption because quite often you're going to be going back through the schedule and wonder you know what actually happened there and by give, providing yourself a note or other project managers a note at least they can plan for that and they can have a backup plan in case there's any kind of again internet um, interruption perhaps in there um, where those resources were actually working. Now let's go take a look at those project statistics again and so I'm going to go up to the project statistics button and now we see that the baseline is slightly different right than what we were looking at before you can see the work is right is a little bit lower we can see cost information how that's different right and now we're seeing actual and remaining information now starting to be filled out within our uh, within our project